So I have a quick update for you on the Franklin Armory Title I lawsuit, and this involves the California Department of Justice finally doing something they should have done a long time ago. So let's talk about this. But real quick before we jump into this video, if you think that the state of California's ban on so-called assault weapons is unconstitutional, go ahead and hit that like button and subscribe. I also wanna give a shout out to one of the main supporters of the channel, and that is USCCA. Through your membership, you get training, education, and self-defense liability protection. So if you carry a firearm, I highly recommend you take a look into USCCA, and I'll put a link to them down in the detail section. I also wanna let you know that this content is powered by the Firearms Policy Coalition. So head on over to joinfbc.org to help support the Second Amendment cause. Thank you again, Firearms Policy Coalition, for supporting this channel. So like I said in the intro, I have an update for you on the Franklin Armory Title I lawsuit. This is something that people ask me quite frequently about, and we actually got some additional news and an update on something that the state of California is finally doing, pretty much in relation to this lawsuit that was brought against them. And essentially, the state of California has finally added the other option in the DRO system, but the state is simply doing this to try and moot the lawsuit against them. So let's get into this and let's talk about what's going on. Franklin Armory is a manufacturer out of Nevada and they make California compliant firearms for those of us here in the state. They produce things like the CA-7, the CA-9, the CA-11, which are actually pistols that are on the California handgun roster, which is amazing. They also created a, a firearm that is called the Title I, which is actually deemed to be an other. And it's an other firearm that did not meet the California definition of so-called assault weapons and also did not meet federal restrictions on specific types of firearms either. And it was pretty much not deemed to be either a rifle, pistol, or shotgun, either by the state of California's definition or by federal definitions either. Therefore, because of this, because it did not meet all these definitions of prohibited firearms, uh, people in the state of California were able to actually be in possession of these items. Well, the state of California did not like people being in possession of other firearms, so they amended the penal code, there being 30515, which talks about so-called assault weapons, and they did that by passing SB 118. That amended the language to add in others, including the Franklin Armory Title I, to be prohibited items. Now, the state of California did that generally by prohibiting the possession of other firearms unless they are registered with the state of California, which we're gonna talk about in just a little bit. But the larger issue with the Franklin Armory Title I is that although it was deemed to be an other farm and people could be in lawful possession of it, uh, the company Franklin Armory was never actually able to sell that farm to consumers in California. So in the state of California, when you purchase a farm from a dealer, they have to run a background check and that farm has to be entered in the dealer record of sale. And one of those requirements is that they have to mark the farm as one specific thing, either a rifle, pistol, shotgun, receiver, revolver, etc. And there are specific options that the dealer has to enter. Well, one of the issues with the Franklin Armory Title I is since it was an other, the Department of Justice didn't have an other option in that drop-down menu. And although the state of California was told they needed to add that other drop-down menu, they continually failed to do it. And this failure of the state of California and the Department of Justice to add that option in the drop-down menu became the basis of two Franklin Armory lawsuits against the state of California. So the last update I brought you on this Franklin Armory lawsuit was that the lawsuit survived a demur that was filed by the state of California. Essentially, the state of California was trying to get rid of this entire case through a demur. However, that demur was actually denied by the Superior Court and the case is now moving forward to trial. Well, we got information from Franklin Armory and I will actually read this press release letter to you, which is an update on this whole lawsuit that's going on. So the letter reads, CA introduces other to DES. And it says, breaking, California Bureau of Firearms botches apparent attempt to moot Franklin Armory lawsuit. And this is dated September 30th, 2021. It states, today Franklin Armory Inc. is proud to provide an update on its lawsuit against the California Department of Justice that seeks to hold the department accountable for its refusal to process lawful firearms to non-prohibited California residents. On Monday, in response to the lawsuit brought by Franklin Armory and the California Rifle and Pistol Association, the DOJ unveiled and announced its modification of the dealer record of sale entry system. This update modified the DES to include the other field for the transfer of farms that previously fell outside the DOJ's pre-programmed parameters, dubbed other farms, a key demand made within the lawsuit. The lawsuit stems in part from the design and implementation of DES, which is incapable of accepting the necessary data required for the transfer of firearms deemed others because they did not fall within the DOJ's pre-programmed criteria 
and the DOJ's refusal to provide alternative means to effectuate the transfer of these firearms. Licensed firearms dealers in California are required by law to submit all firearms transfer data to the DOJ electronically via the DES or any other approved DOJ procedure. Until this recent change, the DES has only permitted the accurate and lawful transfer of handguns, pistols, revolvers, rifles, shotguns, and frames or receivers. Dealers were prevented from accurately submitting the required information through the DES for these other firearms and the DOJ offered no alternative means of transfer. This exclusion of the other category and lack of alternative means of transfer barred non-prohibited citizens from lawfully acquiring other firearms, including the Franklin Armory Title I. The lawsuit further alleges that despite being placed on notice of this defect, the DOJ intentionally refused to correct the system or provide an alternative means of transfer to delay the lawful processing and transfer of Franklin Armory Title I firearms and concurrently pursued legislation to prohibit the transfer of these firearms to the thousands of Franklin Armory customers who were barred from acquiring the firearms by the DOJ's conduct. The letter concludes by saying that though the DES was updated with the other option, Monday's update did not lift the DOJ's bar on all others. DOJ rules and instructions concurrently announced with the change arbitrarily restricts the use of the other option, rendering its function illusory for the transfer of currently lawful variants of the Title I and many other firearms. We believe that these actions only serve to strengthen the validity of the lawsuit rendering the Franklin Armory Title I and many other lawful firearms that are currently barred from lawful transfer by the DOJ. So the state of California has finally added the other option. The argument made here in the letter is that the state did this to try and moot the case because one of the reliefs being sought was for the state to make that option available. However, this is a little too late and the state of California knows this and they know essentially this does absolutely nothing. The state has already prevented people from lawfully acquiring the Title I from Franklin Armory. Also, the state of California has already passed SB 118 during this period where they would not allow for these to be lawfully transferred. And SB 118 made these other farms like the Title I, uh, so-called assault weapons under the Penal Code in California 30515. Also, the state is already moving forward with a registration of other farms as so-called assault weapons, which is actually starting today, October 1st and will run until the end of this year. So here in the letter, they're saying, yes, the state of California is doing this, but it essentially doesn't do anything because the state still barred these farms from being transferred over into people's possession. And currently they're still barring that same thing. And even on top of that, they have already amended the language and they are already instituting this registration process. So this is a pretty much big nothing. And the reason they, why the state of California is doing this is because they want to moot this lawsuit against them. This tactic of trying to moot a case is nothing new. We've seen this happen in the state of New York. Uh, when a case out of the state of New York reached the Supreme Court, the state of New York changed that law and said that the case was moot. And unfortunately, the Supreme Court agreed with them and let the case be mooted. And essentially, since then, um, other states like the state of California have used this same tactic. So this case involving Franklin Armory is something definitely we will be keeping our eyes on especially with the registration period opening up for other farms in the state of California. We will see if this case impacts that registration process and all of that going forward. Also, if you want my opinion on registering so-called others as so-called assault weapons in the state of California, I did a video on that and you can click this tab right there and it takes you to that video and I kind of give my opinion on registering others in the state of California as so-called assault weapons and what I would recommend and what I would do. Also, if you like this video and like support the channel, one of the best ways to do that is to like, comment, and subscribe. All those things help to fuel the algorithm or fuel Al Gore's rhythm. It signals to YouTube that you guys see value in these videos in this type of two-way news and then it helps push it to more people. So it's free to like, comment, and subscribe and all those things really do impact this channel. It helps to impact the reach of this channel. Again, it signals to YouTube that people value these videos this type of topic, and then it pushes it to more people. So thank you so much to everybody who likes, comments, subscribes, supports this channel. And if you're a new subscriber, go ahead and comment down below that you're a new subscriber, and I'll make sure I comment back to you. So as always, thank you all for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And never forget, this is from Built Barm Scholars and Snatch Will Maintain Barm Scholars.